Hey guys, and welcome back to Lost Bits, the series where we explore the video game content that goes unused, altered, and unseen. Now normally I do about one Zelda Lost Bits video per year, and oops, I guess I missed that mark in 2020. But let's steer this ship back on track, and with the momentous occasion of the 35th anniversary of the series here in 2021, let's check out the original Wii release of Skyward Sword, which of course just got its HD re-release for the Switch as I'm making this video. And as always, if at any point you enjoy the video, be sure to let me and the YouTube algorithm know with a like down below, it really helps a lot, and consider subscribing to find your way back in the future. And with all of that said, it's time to take to the skies and find some lost bits. Alright, what do you say we kick this video off with some unused graphics? First up, we have this disc-like model associated with a file named Switch Harp which features this texture of half of the bottom of the Triforce wings, as well as test written on the side, explicitly denoting the placeholder nature of this texture. Now, it's believed that this model was intended to be related to the harp platform seen in the Light Tower, and based on the file name, it was probably some switch that would activate it. Then, speaking of placeholder textures, we got quite a few more of them to go. So, next is this texture sporting the Japanese text Kari on it, which just simply translates to temporary. And, based on the file name Bird Egg, it probably had something to do with Loftwing Eggs. Then, even more explicit is this sample texture that literally has sample texture written on it, and this one is apparently related to the textures used for the scales of the imprisoned. Then next, we got this here placeholder texture, again featuring a Japanese character, this time Ki, the Japanese word for tree. Then there's this small placeholder texture found amongst the files for Gabora's eyes for his naked model. There's also this placeholder water texture with a pointing arrow, maybe to signify which way water was planned to flow. And also speaking of water, next is this texture known as dummy water, which oddly enough appears to be a hardwood-like texture with a red exclamation mark and dummy written in bright green. This texture can also be seen placed on a 3D model of Skyloft Lake for some reason. Yep, definitely looks like a lake to me. Next up, there's what looks to be a lower quality version of Groose's painting seen in the Skyloft Knight Academy. And then also for the Academy, there's an unused version of the drawing of Link's face seen on Groose's punching bag. In the one that is used, we see Link in his casual wear as seen in the game, while the unused one features a more generic depiction of Link with his lemon yellow hair and his signature green hat. Now it's not believed that the drawing was once planned to change or something after Link does receive his knight's clothing, but rather based on the hair being a much brighter blonde than seen in the game, it's believed that maybe this was just a placeholder drawing made before Link's design was actually finalized for this game. Next, there's a single animation that goes unused here, and that's for Karane. Now this unused animation appears to be of her retreating when being blasted by the Gust Bellows item. Karane is only seen outside in the game before you obtain the Gust Bellows, and after can only be seen indoors. And since you can't normally ever use items like this inside the Academy, you can't ever use the Bellows on her. And of course, this leaves this animation never normally seen. Moving along, there are a few text-related things for us to talk about here. First are a few regional differences seen in some text between the North American and European releases of the game. These are admittedly pretty minor changes, like here the, ah uh, yes, didn't make an appearance in the European release, and here the, but there's no time to admire it, was changed too, but now is not the time to give it a close examination. It's not clear why the latter difference exists, but it's thought to stem from the translators for the European version adopting a more literal translation from the Japanese release for that version. Then, next, there are three unused text strings found in the game left over from the demo of Skyward Sword shown off at E3. Yeah, that's E3. Anyways, these three text strings are Bird Riding, Dungeon, and Boss Battle. And each of these relates to a section of the game attendees of that E3 could demo. It's interesting that it's just listed as Bird Riding instead of referencing the Loftwing. Now, I don't remember if the name Loftwing was revealed at this time yet or not, but I guess regardless, they probably just wanted to boil down the selection text to the simplest terms possible for the demo. Then last for the unused text found so far is unused dialogue text for Fi, giving the player info about the Deku Hornet enemies. She would mention how they won't hesitate to attack you, how you can't hit them with your sword, and how they can also be used as potion ingredients. These never go used since you need to Z-target an object to get Phi to analyze it, and since you can't Z-target Deku Hornets, well, 
you get the idea. Now unfortunately, as of yet, no proper debug mode for this game has been discovered in any accessible format. But that said, there are leftover references to a stage select and stage manager option found in the RAM addresses of the game. These might be related to the debug menu that was seen at a game developers conference that took place before the release of Skyward Sword, but currently there is no way of knowing for sure. It's a real shame that it looks like this debug menu wasn't left in the game. I've seen some speculate that maybe you need a dev kit or something to access this, but yeah, as of right now, I don't think anyone's been able to play around with it just yet. But as unfortunate as that is, thankfully, to at least kind of make up for it, there's actually a leftover test map in Skyward Sword that can be accessed. Unfortunately though, I could only find a way to access it in the European copies of the game, and well, as much as I'd love to show you some of my own footage, since I only have the North American one myself, here I'll show you some gameplay of the stage by Triforce Legend. Quite fittingly, this test stage is just known as Demo, and as you can see, there's not all too much to this test room, as it's basically just a large empty space for Link to run around in. What is pretty cool though is that here we can see some more otherwise unused placeholder textures. First is the grassy texture on the bottom here, which just has Lawn Zero printed on it. Then for the sides, there's a placeholder wall texture featuring the text Stone 2 on it. I'm not sure if these are just some stock textures or something, but regardless, they certainly give this room a unique vibe, that's for sure. Now this area is certainly not a test room that stands among the titans that we've seen in games before on Lost Bits, like in Mario Sunshine, Pikmin, or Mario Kart, but regardless, I think it's still pretty cool nonetheless. And now for the last stop of this video, Skyward Sword has a decent amount of things hidden away from normal view, leaving them normally unseen. This is of course, unless you're able to zip around the camera, or use a few tricks such as a moon jump. For example, first are a few treasure chests that, for whatever reason, are found out of bounds. The first of these is a chest that can be found floating in the abyss just outside the wall behind the dresser here in the Lumpy Pumpkin main hall. And apparently if you somehow are able to open up this chest, you'd be given a piece of heart. Similarly, there's a secret chest that can be found just outside the walls of Karane's room at the Skyloft Knight Academy. This one, too, contains a piece of heart. Currently, it's unclear if these were meant to be found somewhere in these areas or not at some point in development, but them being left behind here should certainly raise some suspicions. Next is another chest, and this one is actually found outside the room with the Fire Dragon. It's found not just floating this time, as it's found in this here small room, and this time, no piece of heart, as instead, this chest strangely gives the player the goddess's harp. And it looks like the accompanying text wasn't implemented yet as the text box just appears blank. Then, back to Skyloft, there's actually a normally unreachable goddess's cube chest found inside the model of the exterior of the bazaar. Under normal circumstances, it remains closed and can't be opened, but here I'm using a code that activates all of the goddess's chests, and this chest, just like the first two, results in an extra piece of heart. Then lastly for the unused chests, I didn't see this one documented anywhere yet as I'm making this, but there appears to be a opened small chest inside the model of the sealed temple. There's no normal way to get in here of course, and oddly enough, even if I did manage to get to the area physically, the chest would despawn, so I was only able to see it by moving the camera inside from a distance. Pretty strange. And this is actually a good segue to the next section as we talk about some normally inaccessible doors and bird statues. Now in this same area as I mentioned previously, there is also a normally unreachable bird statue as well as not one set of doors, but two. And these doors and bird statue are also present in the present as well as past versions of the sealed temple interior. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to interact with them myself, as just like with the unused small chest, whenever I tried to get close to them myself, both the statue and doors would despawn, so I'm left with just observing them at a distance. But that said, apparently going to the sky from this statue would warp you to Hylia's realm. Then for the doors, apparently attempting to go through this second set of doors will take you to an alternate version of the sealed temple, where Link doesn't have any sound effects and every time you land on the ground after a jump you would hear a Bokoblin's scream. 
There's also another unused and unseen door found again outside the sealed temple, this time if you take the exit towards Faron Woods and move the camera to where the main door of the temple would be, you will find this here door. Here apparently trying to go through these doors would warp you right to the sealed grounds. And last up, there is a normally inaccessible version of the Laneru Desert. So normally, when moving between the Temple of Time and the Laneru Desert, Link has to cross through a cave entrance on either side of this hill here, which in turn will load you into the respective area. But with a little bit of magic and levitation, you can actually hover over this cave from the Temple of Time side and discover an old version of Laneru Desert that's basically never normally seen. This version of Laneru Desert obviously has a lower level of detail as the textures and models look much less complete, which makes sense since this is so far from the player's normal view. To add to that, Collision is also spotty to say the least, and yeah, let's just say I fell out of bounds quite a lot. Several small entrances can be seen around the area, but they don't lead to anywhere and even the big door here is also just a fake. And interestingly, pretty much all of the bird statues from the desert are still found here basically in the same spot they are normally seen in the desert as we know it, and they still reference their respective area. Unfortunately though, attempting to use any of them, at least in my experience, to take to the sky resulted in the game crashing. There are also several strange, sort of detailed areas, at least more detailed than you'd expect an area to be where the player wasn't meant to set foot in. Based on some of these details, it's entirely possible that at some point in development, the Temple of Time and Laneru Desert were going to be one area without needing the cave segment to load between the two different maps. Like this here exit from one of the caves to the desert, although super unfinished here, does have collision and looks like it once might have been planned to be a pathway from the temple. It just seems a little too developed and detailed for something that's never normally seen. Additionally, having all the bird statues here in an area that you would normally could never access also adds fuel to this theory. Now I am just speculating here, but it's likely that having such a large area with both the Temple of Time and Laneru Desert in one map might have proved to be more than the Wii could handle, thus leading to the decision to effectively split the map in two. But as a result, it also seems that this lower detailed version of Laneru Desert appears to have been an earlier version of it than what's seen in the final game. And evidence of this can be seen around this here bird statue which has a rock wall behind it which isn't seen at all in the version of the desert that is used. This detail is so far away from the Temple of Time that it's hard to believe that this is something negligible. And I'm sure there are more small changes like this, but they just go to show that at least some changes to the map were made from whenever this old version was built. Oh yeah, and there's also this thing found way in the distance under one of the cliffs, just another small detail that you can never normally see. Also, a similar story to this can be seen if you jump over the cave from the desert back to the Temple of Time. Not as many cool changes here, but it's interesting to see that much of this area still has working collision, well, more or less. Jumping over this cliff offers a pretty cool out-of-bounds experience both ways. And this isn't the only area with out-of-bounds goodies either, not by a long shot. If you haven't yet, be sure to check out the Boundary Break video on this game by She Says, where he shares a bunch more cool out-of-bounds discoveries. But that's about it for Skyward Sword. While you're here, check out some more of my Lost Bits and subscribe if you like. But as always guys, thank you all so much for tuning in today, and I will see you in a bit.